Hi, Leather Rock here, and today I'm going to treat you to a makeup tutorial. I'm going to show you how you can get this lavender look right here that I accomplished with a new palette that I treated myself to. Last week I got two very similar portable little palettes like this. What do you think? They're from a company called Color Magic. Now these are much more muted and neutral than I typically like. And, but these, actually each of these palettes, as you can see, has 10 colors in them. And they look very similar to me to the Dior palettes, even though I think the Dior palettes tend to have brighter colors in them. But if you want to spend, I don't know, 40 some, 50 some dollars or more on a little makeup palette, that's on you. I prefer not to spend that kind of money. Um, let's take a look at the shades that are in these. Um, one of these, this one here, is supposed to be the warm one. And even though that looks kind of a little on the cool side to me, this one here is supposed to be cool, even though you could see that the brown shades definitely seem like they're warm ones. Um, either way, maybe they would look better without the um, covers on them. So these are both palettes here. And this is better without the... And this look here I got with the lavender and plum shades in this palette here. Um, I didn't use a black eyeliner this time. I used a wet and wild coal pencil. Um, the most of the lettering has rubbed off on them, so I can't remember the exact color. But it's whatever shade they have. It's closest to purple. This is like a periwinkle type purple that I use for my eyeliner. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you how I did it. Now, first thing I'm going, I should do, is clip my hair to the side so that it doesn't get stuck in the coconut oil and make a mess. And this is also the same technique that I would use if I had to walk in the rain, like to a club or something. And if you ever tease your hair up big, you know that rain and big hair do not mix. If your hair is teased up and it gets wet, it will end up felting up on you and it will mat down close to the scalp but before it does that it will make your hair frizzy and it will compact it and it will really tangle it but good and make it so much harder to smooth out much less brush out and you know you cannot brush wet hair nothing good can come of it when hair is wet it will stretch it will break it's not good so if your hair is wet the best thing to do and if your hair was teased up and you fell into a pool or you got caught in a rainstorm or something the best thing for you to do is to let it dry because you really don't want to mess with wet hair because it will just break off and you will hate yourself in the morning so I'm going to take this is the, pa the palette that we're going to use and I already have my brushes ready and I've got my trusty coconut oil that is really great for removing makeup and hopefully Oh, and I remembered the wet washcloth this time, so I'm not going to go into this with forgetting some of the things. I have tissues and all the things I need. So, we are going to get started. I'm going to do my format of taking it off on this side. And, okay, where's my mirror? These come with mirrors, as you can see, but I really prefer a bigger mirror to work with, so... And I could grab any mirror. Right now I just happen to be using a mirror from one of my makeup palettes. I'm going to try not to mess with the eyebrow color because that's just going to add to the time that it takes to do this. And I don't want you guys to die of boredom while you're waiting for me to finish doing the job. So I think it's better to not bother with starting off with the putting on the foundation and doing the eyebrows and stuff because 
depending on what your eyebrows look like, you're going to do it the way that you do it. And everybody has a different um, a technique for applying their foundation. So I don't know that you can really learn anything from watching somebody apply their foundation. I mean, I do notice that a lot of people use sponges and beauty blenders and maybe some people use brushes and things. I prefer to use a bare hand because it seems to spread the foundation better. It also seems to do a better job of blending it. You don't get brush strokes. You don't waste a lot of product like you do when you use a beauty blender. And frankly, at the prices that makeup goes for, I can't see an application product that just wastes a lot of product. Not to mention how hard it is to clean and sanitize sponges. And you want to talk about something that harbors bacteria, a sponge will do that. So I don't use them too much. Okay, if you get some extra um, coconut oil, feel free to rub it into the back of your hands because they can always use some moisturizing. Tabby boy, can, can I ever do a video without yelling at the cat? Boy, Tabby boy, what's the matter? You know I'm trying to do a video and you're going to meow and complain. Huh? What's the matter? What's the matter? Are you hungry? Maybe my cat's hungry. Are you hungry? What's the matter, baby? What's the matter, baby? Oh, I got a hungry kitty. Maybe my cat's hungry. Come here. You want food? Come here. Oh, there you go. See, I knew you wanted something. Okay. On to the makeup. Now, because these colors are kind of muted and I'm trying to get them to stand out, and I'm going to end up with this, I'm going to use this lavender on my lid color, and I really want my colors to pop. So you know what I'm going to use to prep my uh, eyelid? I'm going to use my Ben Nye cream color white. I'm going to apply this directly to my eyelid that already is moist with the coconut oil and I'm going to pat it on my lid and it's going to look white and I'm not going to blend it so that you can't see the white I'm going to go ahead and work with the white because it'll give me a nice moist surface for the eyeshadow to adhere to. Um, I wouldn't use any other color but white for this because if you have you're working with pale or pastel colors and you really want them to show up or even if you are using a bright color and you want it to show up or try this say you're a person with a darker skin tone and you want to wear a real bright eyeshadow and you want it to, the colors to really pop try applying white to your lid before putting your bright color and I guarantee you the bright color will show up much more vividly. Now, I am going to, let's see which of these brushes is the brush. Sometimes I have to, if I'm making sure which brush I need to use because my brushes already have eyeshadow color, a good way to figure out which brush is has the color you need is to put some of that eye, eyeshadow uh, primer, in, in my case the white, put that on the back of your hand, okay? And then when you, tabby boy, and then when you do that, you can touch the brushes to the back of your hand and you can find out for sure what color is on what brush. Okay, see these colors look very similar on here. So it almost doesn't matter when they're that similar. I'm going to go into this and I'm going to take the lavender color. Now you can see the lavender and the pink are very similar but I'm going to go ahead for the lavender because that is what I want to notice the most now I sometimes if you want a bit a uh, stronger color payoff and if it happens to be an eyeshadow that has a lot of talcum in it and it doesn't it's not very pigment rich in other words it's a kind of eyeshadow that does not have an intense color payoff in this case it's good to scratch the surface of the eyeshadow with your presumably clean hands and then use your eyeshadow and usually I like to just dab and sweep because a lot of people are afraid of fallout 
but when you don't have a lot of color payoff and you want to then you want to get as much color as possible on the brush and with that brush I'm going to go just on the eyelid itself I'm not really extending up to the crease because since these eyeshadows do not have intense color payoff because they're frankly rather cheap you want to get as opaque a cover of the eyeshadow as possible again I'm only going on to the lid itself I'm not going up to the crease I'm not going above now then I am going to take the white see this white here I'm going to use this as my highlight color for the brown bone generously apply it to the brush now this brush I'm using right here this is from B&H Cosmetics and this was in my nude rose nightfall palette it comes with a two-ended uh, brush and I'm using the bigger brush and I'm going on my brow bone with this and again since these eyeshadows are of a lower quality and they are not with a very intense color payoff I can go a little heavier than I normally would if I was using a white stark white eyeshadow for my brow bone I'm getting close to the eyebrow but I'm not touching it because the last thing I want to do is mix eyeshadow with my wet eyebrow makeup if your eyebrows are naturally dark in the way you want to and you don't need any color to accentuate them then I suppose you could feel free to touch the color actually up to the eyebrow but if you have any kind of eyebrow makeup I would not because you don't want to smear it and why do I notice because I've done it before yeah experience is the best teacher isn't it okay now we're going to take the other brush and I'm going to go into the plum now they look rather similar until you get the light nice and bright on them but I'm going to use and this is a brush now I thought this is one of my elf brushes I think actually this was a brush I got uh, the company is called either Vivace or Vivace and I got this at the 99 cent store I'm going to sweep this into the plum and I'm going to go it, apply it to my crease and I'm going to sweep back and forth, back and forth, uh, following the socket of my eye. Now, if you have any kind of hooding on your eyes, maybe you're Asian or maybe you are not 21 anymore and your eyelid has started to sag, if that's the case, when you are applying your um, crease color, you want to not only be kind of digging in the crease, but you want to go up a little bit because that will make up for the eyelid part that is sagging down and is, and is forming that hood and when you do that you will effectively be like giving your eye a little bit of a lift and it won't seem like it's sagging as much this can help if you just have slightly aging sagging eyelids this can also help if you're Asian and you have not had that surgery that some of them make to actually get a crease which frankly I don't understand why a beautiful Asian person with what they call hooded eyes would get surgery to make them get the quote unquote Anglo or round eye look you guys are so naturally beautiful as you are why you would want to have surgery to change I don't know I mean I think the Asian people are some of the most beautiful people in the world so if you're born with a natural kind of beauty I wouldn't mess with it but hey just my opinion far be it for me to be critical of other people's cultures that I probably don't understand I mean it seems like there's some internalized hatred going on or maybe the uh, pressure that you think that you need to look like other people and that's kind of a shame because if you loved yourself you wouldn't feel that you had uh, to look like somebody that you're not unless of course that's you love the aesthetic so much that that's just the way you want to look in which case I mean like I don't care about it, it, some people are all hung up about this concept of cultural appropriation and to me I think fashion hair clothing styles makeup or whatever it's kind of like enjoying different kinds of cuisine who, who doesn't like to eat different kinds of food and are you going to have hang-ups because oh this kind of food is from a certain culture so maybe I should feel guilty about enjoying a certain food that's not made perfected by my ancestors or something if we can feel free to eat from a variety of cultures and cuisines 
and countries eat all, from all over the globe, why can't we dress and enjoy the aesthetics of other cultures if we find them beautiful, if we are embracing that look because we find the aesthetic pleasing, if we go about this with an attitude of honoring the culture that things came from, like for instance, while we're on the subject of cultural appropriation, I like to wear cornrow braids. When I wear my hair braided, I do it myself. I don't go to a salon and pay somebody to do it. Um, I don't do this with the intention of offending anybody. I, it's never really my intention. If I wear a certain look, it's because I love that look. And if there are people who have attitudes about that, first of, all, first of all, I'm pretty lucky that I haven't run into it myself. Even around here, which is not exactly a cosmopolitan mecca, or I, I actually mecca is not quite the word I wanted to use, but um, I haven't run into people not being cool uh, if I adopted aspects of their cultures in with my aesthetic and with my fashion sense. I think that people, generally speaking, are flattered that you appreciate their get up enough to copy it or find it inspiring. That has been my perspective and I know when I wear Asian style things and I go to certain cultural activities, they know that I appreciate them. When I went to Chinese New Year festivities here in town and I wore an Asian dress, uh, I felt nothing but love from people. So not everybody has hang-ups about such things. Maybe the people with hang-ups tend to be the younger people that are in the social justice warrior movement. Okay, remember I told you I was going to skip black eyeliner for this look. I'm going to use this Wet n Wild pencil. Now, I'm not waterlining with this. I'm just hugging the lash line. And I freshly sh uh, sharpened this before I went on foaming. Now you see how this indeed is a purple, but it's just it's kind of like a like a periwinkle type of a purple. It's kind of got more blue in it than it has pink in it. And now since my eyes happen to be green, colors that have blue in them or pink in them seem to accentuate the green in my eyes. I don't know if you can tell with uh, this light, because this is really not the best lighting, I understand. And I would really like to get one of those ring lights that a lot of the beauty bloggers use that it tends to be give flattering light around the face but I do like the overhead light because it allows for a certain overexposure and you get this white glow here that I think disguises fine lines and wrinkles and stuff so I kinda like the overexposure so I hope this shows up okay you know I didn't do the wing here very much Can you see that? Uh, I let me see if I need to darken up that crease color any. That's the only thing that this look to me seems a little bit on the subtle side, and subtlety is really kind of not my thing. But when I saw these palettes, I felt like I had to get them because I knew that I could do a bunch of looks out of them. And one of the other things that I like about both of these palettes is that each of these palettes has a nice pale, a couple of nice pale shades that a person like me that's really, really, really light can use for their highlight, for their brown bone color. You've got, in this palette here, you've got a very pale blue that's very close to white, and you've got, uh, I won't call it a gold, but I'll call it like an eggshell, like a yellowish white. Then here you have a white, and here you have like an off-white that's much paler than the one here. So by having both of these palettes, you definitely have, for the, I think they're worth it just for the brow bone colors alone. Not to mention I really like the greens in this one. It's also in the same palette that I'm doing. And maybe next month I will do a tutorial using the greens in the palette if you like. Let's see. I hope these match. The only thing about this technique of mine of, of doing the makeup first and then taking off one side is sometimes I worry about them the being symmetrical. So I hope they are. Okay, let me find the mascara. Okay, I'm still using 
this LA Colors mascara here, and it's really starting to use up. So I have a feeling that I'm, I'm only going to use it once or twice more because it really seems like it is drying out and there's not a whole lot left. I don't usually wear this when I'm going clubbing. There are other mascaras that I use, but this I put on today. It was kind of like a spring day in the town, in the city today. Uh, I took a walk on the boardwalk and uh, I did a little bit of shopping, which will be the subject of another video. I got some necklaces that I thought were pretty spectacular that I will show you in a new video. And uh, I got some chocolate today, which I'm sure I'm not going to show in the video, but uh, do know that if I see good chocolate at a good price, I'm probably going to buy it. Yeah, this mascara definitely doesn't have as much in it as it had when I first bought it. But they say that you should only keep mascara for about three months or so anyway. So that's why I only open up one or two mascaras, maybe three tops, so that I can use them up before the bat too much bacteria grows and they recommend they be thrown out. And I actually, to be perfectly honest, I don't really consistently throw out my mascara every three months. I throw it out when it gets all gummy and dried out but I take I cut off usually the handle and save these because it, another name for mascara brushes are, are spoolies and spoolies clean spoolies can be used to brush up your eyebrows before coloring them uh, spoolies can also be used to fan out your eyelashes before you put a mascara on or if you do a primer and then a mascara because there are some mascaras that are two-step processes because they have the fibers in them. And mascaras with fibers are really great for going out. Incidentally, I have at least two pairs of um, false eyelashes, but I really don't bother with false eyelashes because to me I think that's a bit too much. So. I don't know that you're ever going to see a makeup tutorial by me that includes false eyelashes. I mean, in, among some uh, beauty YouTubers, false eyelashes seem like a ubiquitous part of the look, but for my look, I just don't see the point of false eyelashes because it's too, too much, I think. It would be kind of like me wearing a double D bra. You know damn well it's not so fit. And for me to wear it, it would be too much false advertising. If I'm going to come out with three inch long fake eyelashes, I mean, there's no way that's real. And I mean, and I'm not one of these lucky people that was blessed with long eyelashes. So to put a bunch of falsies on just kind of doesn't make much sense. Okay, what do you think? Wasn't that easy? Just three colors. They're admittedly on the subtle side, but you know what? You can get the similar look. Just feel free to substitute the eyeshadows that you have that look like that. But if you've ever seen the Chanel palettes, and I mean, I read fashion magazines. I learn about all kinds of makeup that there, it's going to be a cold day in hell before I spend the money for. But these are definitely look like a knockoff of the Dior shape. And they had so many colors. I've seen uh, pictures uh, backstage of runway shows where makeup artists who have Dior shadows have palettes and palettes and palettes and palettes. And they are indeed shaped like this, but cost a hell of a lot more than I paid. Because, I mean, if I'm going to pay top dollar, at least I'd want the bright colors that I can use. I got these specifically for my YouTube channel. Um, let me show you what I use for my foundation. I use the Fit Me Maybelline Matte and Poreless, and the color is 102 Porcelain. It's very, very light, like me. Alright, 
and for my contour I use the standard contour shade that I've been using the cover girl professional eye enhancers and the color is called uh, jammin improvisation I used a little miniature crappy eyebrow eyeshadow uh, excuse me <coughs> blush brush from God knows what pa palette and just applied here. I don't want to do it again because I already applied it. I didn't bother applying a blush with this. Lately I've been just using a contour and a highlight shade. Now I will show you the highlight brush that I use if I can find it. If I can't find it I will just show you the palette. Okay, I can't find the highlight brush, but I will show you the highlight palette I use. This is from B&H Cosmetics, the black light highlight, and I use the middle color here. Let me turn the light out because it's too much glare. This middle pink shade here, because this pink here seems to have green flecks in it, and this pink here has pink flecks in it, and I didn't want anything that was going to clash with the makeup that I'm wearing. Okay, for my lipstick, here's what I use. I use Katy Perry's Katy Cat Matte by CoverGirl. This is Katy Perry and CoverGirl thing. And this is a lavender kind of color called Cosmo Kitty. Let me turn the light out. Now, I actually topped this off with a gloss. I don't wear glosses often because they're sticky and my hair just gets in them and if I'm dancing my hair gets in them and if I'm walking down the street my hair blows in them and when you have long hair it sticks in your lipstick so that's why I really like matte lip colors because you don't get the stickiness and it doesn't feel gloppy and when you open your mouth you don't get the sticky uh, you know when, when lipstick uh, gets gummy near the mucous membrane part and it looks stringy and and then it gets in your teeth and stuff so by having working with matte colors you don't really have that problem now one thing I use when I apply a lip gloss on top of pre-existing lip color I'm not going to put the sponge applicator on my lipstick because then the lipstick I'm wearing will actually color the gloss and even though this gloss looks rather similar to my lip color, I don't want to adulterate it. So what I do is I put the applicator on the back of my hand, then touch it to my finger, then I apply it from my finger to my mouth. And I don't do too much of the gloss, again, because it's sticky. Today the boardwalk was not windy at all, but my street was windy. So, but I had my hair clipped up actually because I just didn't want to deal with it going all crazy because I knew I was going to film after I got home. So, there you have it. Lavender eye look using the Color Magic eyeshadow kit. Real easy to do. See, it doesn't need to take forever to do your eye makeup. Now, if you like these videos, feel free to hit the like button on this video. And if you haven't already, maybe you should subscribe. If you do, then I'll keep these videos coming. I publish Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Sometimes it's makeup, sometimes it's club life. Um, sometimes I'm talking about my adventures. I hope you're interested. They're certainly fun for me. I hope I'm making you happy too and I would love to have you join my family and hit that bell notification that way you'll know when I make my next upload that way you don't miss anything until then talk to you soon oh and yeah I was gonna show you tabby boy but he left too so talk to you soon bye